G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As round one approaches today, we're going to have a little look at my fantasy team ahead of the 2023 season. If you haven't joined in the fun just yet, you can look in the link in the description of this video and you'll find the invite code to the classic league that we've got going on in True Footy. Um, so if you haven't already, by all means, join along. Putting a disclaimer out there, I am not good at fantasy. Um, for comparison, I think... Most years, I finish sort of just below halfway. Uh, I always want to stay in the top half, but my goal lately has been to um, to really push into that top half. So that gives you some scope as to the fact that I'm not actually good. But in today's video, I'm just going to have a bit of fun with here, and, and we're going to give you a little bit of insight into the team that I'm rolling with in round one. And uh, I, I'd be reluctant to say that there's anything you can take away from this, to be honest, especially if you're already good at fantasy. Uh, but perhaps you guys can help me as well and give me some tips on players that you think are must-haves, etc. Balancing your fantasy team is a bit of a fine art, and to be honest, uh, as I record this, it's currently Tuesday, and so um, I won't be able to necessarily lock in my final team by now. The reason being is I've, I've sort of got like, you know the rookies and the, the bench options um, in place at the moment as to who I think is going to get picked, but then when the teams get revealed, uh, firstly on Wednesday and then again on, on Thursday, those yellow lights become green and red lights as well, so then you know who's playing, then I'll reshuffle as well, but we'll go through all of that. Really enjoying making the content uh, to kick off the 2023 season guys it's been great to have you along for the ride uh, I do just want to acknowledge that uh, how I just hit my elbow I would just like to point out that still about 42% of you who watch my videos uh, I've not subscribed to the channel so that's nearly half which is quite a lot when you think about it I do really appreciate the support but if you are enjoying the content you'd be really helping me out by hitting subscribe it helps in terms of the algorithm it helps grow the channel which is something that I really want to do this year so any help you can offer in that way I'd much appreciate it cool all right let's uh, get stuck right into the actual video itself now uh, like I said, so my team is called the Western Stank Lords uh, for no reason. I made that um, back in 2018 when nobody really watched this channel and I never thought I'd ever have to explain that name to anyone. But uh, there you go. That's what we're called. Um, and I will take you through my best 20, oh, I say 22, I think it's the best 24, 22. I don't know. It's a 22. I don't know why I thought it was 24 for a second. Either way, I'll start with the defense, and then we'll go through the mids and then the forwards as well. And I suppose I could change my mind on the fly here, but I'll let you know who were the first players I picked in my decision-making process and then uh, how it all flowed from there. So we'll start off with the back line as well. Um, so the premium option, I went with Doherty and uh, Dacos as well. Uh, the reason with Dacos is I still think, you know, if he gets more midfield time, there's potential for him to improve. And given that it was only his debut season last year, there's reasonable uh, expectation that he would improve on last year's output as well. So I think he it could go either way with him, but he's one I've taken the punt on. Elliot Yo for me, is an obvious one. Other than the fact that he isn't necessarily the most reliable in terms of staying fit and healthy on the park, 625k is a really good uh, price for what he can offer. It seems really obvious to Eagles fans as well um, that he's going to be playing in the midfield this year, not as a defender as well. So there's a lot more potential to get a lot of possession. So as a, as a cheap mid-price, kind of mid-price option, Elliot Yo, I think he was one of the first players I picked for this back line. Now, the cheaper options I've gone, I've sort of, you know, had the top three as the more expensive and the bottom three as the cheaper options. Jinbi is going to play round one. Um, you can pretty much lock that in. It's almost been confirmed, and he will play with stints in the midfield and the back line. So, uh, good uh, cash cow option. Charlie Constable, the reason I've got him at 332k is because I believe he is going to be playing more of a backline role, which may actually be more of an avenue to him getting into the side uh, for the Gold Coast Suns. I think he only played a couple of games last year, and... Judging by the stats, I think he might have been the sub as well. But if he can find a niche on the halfback flank, we know he can find the fo football. I think 332k is uh, is really good value for someone like him. Darcy Wilmot is a placeholder at this moment. I don't know whether he is likely to play round one. I think the Lions fans in general are fans of Wilmot. I'm hoping that means he plays round one. Otherwise, I'll sub him out for somebody else. As for the um, bench options with Carlton, uh, I'm reluctant to say this out loud because I've never actually heard it out loud. Is it Chincotta? Sincotta? Sinchotta? Sinchotta? Um, God, this two C's and both of them are different C sounds. He was a SSP player, if I'm not mistaken, as well, and considered a chance to play round one. But again, you know, if he doesn't play round one, I'll probably look for another player around that price who will play round one, and that will become my cash cow. Uh, Campbell Chester, as well, I think is a Monty to um, play round one. As a bench option at the base price of 200k, I think that's a no-brainer. And I, uh, I don't think he will necessarily be a good fantasy player early on. He might only get, you know... 
10 to 15 possessions a game early on, but uh, at 200k on your bench, that's a no-brainer. Now we'll talk about the midfield, and uh, I have gone uh, with the premium options. I've gone Laird, who's the, the best fantasy player in the game right now, um, and Captain Dim. Uh, I like to go for the very best. Uh, I don't really know why. Andrew Brayshaw is my other premium one as well, and I think Tom Mitchell, now that he's at Collingwood, has the potential, I think, to get back to that um, you know, high possession sort of style we're used to him. And I, and I know that even at Hawthorne, he was still high possession at the back end, but, but high possession for Tom Mitchell is a different level to high possession for everyone else. So I think at 853K, potentially underpriced from a fantasy point of view. So those are the top three options I've got. I think Dom Sheed as a mid price makes sense at 591K. He's not going to average 110 this year, but uh, it, because he missed football last year, he probably will get, you know, I don't know, 90-odd a game and potentially 100. And, and there, there has been games where Sheed has hit that 120, 130 mark, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even 140. So he can go large. So 591 is really good value for him. I also think there's job security there. So if he doesn't get injured, the Eagles don't have a habit of really dropping senior players. So I think he'll be pretty safe. So that's a pretty obvious one, I thought. And the other one is James Warple, who I think does need a big year. But at 463K... When you factor in Mitchell and Amira have left that midfield, now Warple amongst um, you know Newcomb and uh, Will Day and Carl Amon, uh, he's very much a premier on baller for them now, a primary player for him. So 463k, I think he's pretty much guaranteed to improve on that. Hopefully that translates to you know really consistent results. We know he's a good player. He's all um, he was in the sorry he won the club champion a couple of years ago for the Hawks. I think I'm backing him to regain that form. And I think he's a must-pick for most people, to be honest. Then I've gone with uh, the three rookie options. Will Ashcroft, uh, absolute no-brainer. I might just slide him. I kind of like to have him uh, them in order of how well I think they're going to go. Um, I'd probably change that even. He'd probably go here, to be honest, in terms of how well I think he's going to go. But Ashcroft is a no-brainer. Oliver Holland's also had a pretty good preseason. I believe he is confirmed playing for Carlton. Um, so I think he's... Yeah, a good chance to, to be a very valuable cash cow there. And Cam McKenzie is another one who had a pretty good preseason game for the Hawks um, in their second game against Collingwood, if I'm not mistaken. And um, at 288k, he's going to play. I think um, those would be the three young cash cows I would go first in the midfield. In terms of the subs, I've got Bailey Humphrey. He can play forward as well. I originally had him there. Um, I'm not too sure if he's going to play round one a few weeks ago. It seemed like he was going to, and uh, I'm not too sure. So until that's named, he is in the side, but if he's out, then he's out. And Judd McVie, I really don't know too much about this kid, um, but I think he is a chance to play early. And I think one of the one of the captains nominate him as a potential rising star this year. So I'm kind of just going it off that. If he plays early... 200k, that's a good good value pick. But again, I wouldn't read too much into who's on the bench right now because you would change that right before round one. The Rucks, I'm not completely sold on yet. I still don't know what effect Grundy in the side will have on Gorn, particularly from a fantasy point of view. Um, but for now, that's my placeholder. And I think I'll wait until the last minute before round one before putting too much thought into that. Roman Marshall is considered a player that everyone should probably have in their fantasy team. Um, I think with Paddy Ryder leaving um, and you know his history of being a, a good fantasy option for the most part uh, he's the one I've got at the moment um, and Kalen Lane as the the backup ruck because uh, I didn't really want to spend money on a reserve ruckman but maybe you can let me know if you think that's stupid but I'll, I'll see how we go and again round one sides will dictate how I go there and finally we've got my forward line and this is where I've gone the most heavy so I've gone Dunkley and Taranto as my two premium options to start off with because uh, both are tipped to play a fair bit in the midfield and both have a good knack of kicking goals as well when they do play forward as well. So those were two of the first premium players I picked in this side. Errol Golden, it kind of looks like I've been um, swayed by his preseason performance. I'm a little bit hesitant to lock him in purely because of that, but I think you know he's a third-year player who has no... Um, issue winning the footy and, and certainly has a good tank as evidenced by that preseason game where he you know, won possessions all throughout the four quarters as well. So I think at 735k, that's a pretty good value option and there's room to grow there with Golden um, as well. We haven't seen his best yet, obviously, as a young player. Connor Rosie as well as another player that I think will play um, increasing midfield minutes as time goes on. He was obviously All-Australian last year. I feel like he's about to explode and become an elite player. So that one's a bit of a hunch rather than proven fantasy sort of um, prowess. He's a solid player, obviously 780k. I just think if he becomes that elite player, then 780k 
is probably um, probably unders, to be honest. So he's, he's also a player that I like. So let me know if you think I'm dumb for picking him. Then I've got two cash cow options in Sheasel and Philippou as well, who I think are um, absolute Monty's to play round one. And both will be contenders for the Rising Star as well as, uh, as forward options. So... Again, that one's a bit of a no-brainer. As for the bench options, um, Patrick Voss and Noah Long I've got in there at the moment, but again, that's subject to change. Noah Long looked like he was going to play early for the Eagles and potentially play round one. I no longer expect that to be the case, but again, with the bench options, I'm going to wait and to see the teams who they've picked uh, before I make any you know final decisions on that. And finally as well, here with Alwyn Davey, um, he think he had a pretty good preseason. He's a good chance to debut, so he's my utility. That other sort of instead of the second ruck spot on the list, um, I've got Alwyn Davy as well, who I could shuffle into a four position if Long doesn't get picked or if uh, if Voss doesn't get picked. That would be the way I go, and then just cycle through the the rookies that have been selected as my cash cows. Anyway, guys, that is my team for round one. Like I said. Careful disclaimer, be careful taking my advice for your fantasy team. I like to think there's some good selections in there, and I'm sure there's some selections in there where the people who actually know what they're talking about are looking at it going, this guy does not know anything, but I think there's some good decisions in there. So let me know, give me some feedback. I'd like to have your input, um, and I look forward to doing battle with you on the um, on the battlefield that is AFL Fantasy in the True Footy League. So like I said, the link is in the description of this video, or at least the invite code, um, same as footy tipping. So it'd be great to see you guys involved. So thanks very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.